It's so easy to go into denial about peak oil because it, it, it changes everything. Every one of us has grown up during this unique historical period when we've had easy access to, to cheap energy and all of the things that cheap energy can do for us. And so even people who, who intellectually understand peak oil, as soon as they turn their attention away, almost immediately start to go into sort of their normal mode of thinking. It's a natural human response. I find myself doing it all the time. And, you know, I, I spend hours every day studying peak oil from all sorts of different standpoints. As soon as I turn my attention away, suddenly I'm in the normal world again, this, the so-called normal world, the, the consensus trance that we all live in on a daily basis. In the rich world, in the industrial world, in the English-speaking world, I see almost zero likelihood that the majority is going to actively embrace this anytime soon. But, nonetheless, because of the geological imperative of this, something or other will happen, whether people like it or not. We are almost absolutely, totally dependent on oil for all of our activities. First of all, industry, of course, runs on oil. Everyone understands that. Agriculture, modern mechanised agriculture to feed the world uh, is heavily dependent on oil. Uh, if you look at transportation, uh, again, it's obvious cars and planes uh, run on oil, petroleum, gasoline. Uh, and of course, military capability. You cannot fight a war, as the Americans know, without oil. Uh, so every aspect of human existence uh, is dependent on oil. And when we reach that point, when we get to maximum production, uh, maximum supply capacity relative to demand, uh, that is a very significant point, which uh, many people think, including me, is without precedent in human history. Global oil production will peak. The global economy will be devastated by it. We'll see oil wars. Everything will change as a consequence. And yet people won't be talking about the oil peak. They'll talking, be talking about the unemployment figures. They'll be talking about the high price of food. They'll be talking about the fact that you can't get on an airliner and, and travel anymore because all of the airline industry has, has collapsed. There are only a few carriers still in business and the tickets are astronomically expensive. They'll be talking about the latest uh, war or terrorist incident and they will have completely lost sight of the one event that caused all of those effects. I think the, the evidence for peak oil is absolutely overwhelming. Uh, first of all, we're discovering uh, less and less new oil fields. Um, virtually four-fifths of the oil that we're now consuming comes from fields discovered before 1970. The opportunity uh, to find new oil uh, becomes limited to smaller and smaller pockets, which are more difficult to extract and more costly. We are now consuming each year three times more than the oil, extra oil that we're discovering and that gap is, is widening. Uh, but the key point is, I think, really this. At the moment, the world is using about 84 million barrels a day. Uh, opinion in the oil industry is uh, that we could perhaps, at an absolute limit, push that to around 95 million barrels a day. I don't think you'll find anyone in the oil industry itself, let alone outside it, who thinks we could do better than that. There's something like 53 countries now are physically producing less today than they have at some point in the, in the historical past. I mean, that's fact. That's not interpretation or anything. Of course, you could, if it's just reached peak, you say, may say that's an anomaly, it may, may be able to do a little bit better next year. But by and large, most countries are either past peak or going over it. Britain, for example, peaked in 1999. Norway has also now gone over the top, as the Norwegian government uh, uh, confirms. And, and it's falling fast, about 6% a year. So that means the, the world is pretty much close to peak of ordinary conventional oil, then 
there's another surge of this deep water oil, the last frontier, so to speak. There's a little surge of that coming in, probably. And then, of course, there's the heavy oils of Canada and Venezuela that come in as a huge resource. There's no shortage of it, but the extraction rate is extremely slow and, and expensive. So if you put the whole thing together, I think we have a peak around 210. I think the general consensus, probably within the oil industry itself, although they're very unwilling to say this publicly, but the academic uh, researchers who are much more likely to be independent and hard-headed in their analysis outside the oil industry believe that peak oil probably in the area of a 2010, 2015, something like that. And after that, uh, we begin to see a gradual, very slow, gradual reduction in the supply, but an acceleration of demand. Um, that's why uh, this is not alarmist. Uh, it is impossible to believe that that will not happen. It is going to happen. Also, there's so much debate about this data peak. It really misses the point to a degree because whether the peak came last year, this year or in 10 years time doesn't really make that much difference because it's not a high peak. It's only the maximum, a rather gentle curve. And the real impact of all of that, which is beginning to be realized, is not the peak itself, but the vision of the long decline that follows peak. And that's a relentless, remorseless decline that goes on forever at 2 or 3% a year. It's not individually very much, but that eats into our, 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 our supply very seriously and, and ever worse. We expend about 10 calories of fossil fuel energy for every calorie of food energy that we produce. Now this would have been impossible in any earlier historical time before we had access to cheap oil. If, if we had been uh, expending more energy to grow food in the medieval era than the food gave us, we would starve. It's only because of this, this one time only gift from nature of fossil fuels that were created over millions of years and stored up and that we have been drawing down over the course of just a couple of hundred years that we're able to run these energy deficits in our food system. So we're enormously exposed in that area and, uh, and, and peak oil could in fact mean uh, widespread hunger and even famine on a global scale if we don't prepare for it and begin to transform our global food system to one that is not so dependent on fossil fuels. So I think it's a great illusion for people to think, oh yes, we've been through this, we faced it in the 1970s and we got out of it. Uh, we sort of got out of it. You could argue that we made a right mess of getting out of it and got ourselves into a much worse fix and we should have listened to some of the signals from the earth and so forth, but we clearly didn't. This time it's going to be different. And I think that's going to be rather a stark realization for people. And I think people for a long time are going to be thinking, oh, we got out of the 1930s, we got out of the 1970s, what's going wrong? Why can't we get out of it now using the same kind of techniques? And I think using the same kind of techniques, at least some of the similar techniques, would be a great mistake, although I've no doubt that's what's going to be tried, unfortunately. <laughs> There's a very strong relationship between economic growth and energy growth, um, particularly between growth of electricity demand and also of oil demand. And one of the reasons is that as the economy grows, we nearly always transport more stuff. People drive to more places, they fly to more places, more tourism, more everything. More food comes from far distant places. We're basically moving more molecules faster to more places in greater quantity. And all of this moving of molecules takes a great deal of energy, and most of that energy is oil. And this is where peak oil comes in, because the implication of peak oil is that oil prices are going to become more volatile and that the average price of oil is going to remain structurally higher than it has in decades. And if that happens, then the economic value securing this American debt structure has got to be valued downwards by some factor, let's call it X. And, and factor X uh, is, is, the, is the thing that threatens the United States most. What happens if, especially your key energy feedstock, which is oil, what happens if that goes into decline? And it seems to many of us analyzing this 
that it's uh, unavoidable, the conclusion is unavoidable, that economic contraction will be the result of this. Um, I've not seen any convincing evidence that that, that will not be so.